years and I was in the West with my cousins who are obsessed with your yarn. I don't think you know them, but they were just like, oh my gosh, you have to know about like a book. So I've been following you for a while, but I, I have never knit with your yarn. So I'm really excited to meet you. So tell me your fiber story. <sighs> it's kind of long. <laughs> we have 15 um, minutes. Okay. Do it. So I actually was a crazy stay at home mom knitter and Burn what, do you, through. what do you mean about the crate? What, what do you mean crazy? Like, that's all I did aside from raising my children. Mm -hmm. How many it's, children? Whew, I've got three and one on the way. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. So. Okay, that's a lot of meals a day. Yeah. <laughs> um, Wait, how old are they now? Ten, eight, and six. Yeah. I just, let's just. <laughs> <laughs> it's been busy. You can do this. Okay, so um, so to survive this, because it's like traumatic having kids. You knit. Yes, and I was a hairstylist before having children, so I went from a very social setting yes. to being inside <gasps> with stuck. nobody. And then we moved to Portland also, so I didn't have any like network people. So and don't you think? I'm sorry to inter interrupt you, but don't you think when you first have that first baby, it's very natural to make some friends that are doing that the same exact thing, but then it's harder yes. when you move. Yeah. Like the next opportunity is almost kindergarten. Well, when but you only move, you don't have, like before I moved, I was working, so I had that social yes. outlet. And then we moved and I had a baby, so it was like, what do I do? How Who's going to go out with me? I have this baby. So, <laughs> so what did you do? I started knitting mm -hmm. and that's what I did. Why do you think that knitting was the thing? Um, actually, my first son, um, I cloth diapered <laughs> him, and there were these cute little wool pants that I was like, oh my god, I have to make those, they're so cute. Yeah. And I started them, and I got to the gusset on the pants, and was like, oh, I don't know what yeah. this is. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> A friend of mine's mom came over, and it was probably like a pivotal, life-changing moment, Ooh. but she, yeah. I had never met her. She came over with a Swift, which I was like, what, what is this? Is yeah. And she spun her own yarn and like brought me, she probably had a lot of yarn in her house. Yes, yeah, so she and was like, stashing on you. Yeah, she was like, bit. you want to learn how to knit, so have all of this stuff. Yeah. And she sat with me for, I kid you not, eight hours. Oh. <laughs> and we sat on the couch and like ripped out the gusset that I had failed epically on. Yeah. And she walked me through everything. I was purling wrong. I was doing a bunch of stuff. So she yeah. like corrected it. Intervention is what this was. Yeah. yeah. And then I actually never saw her again. <laughs> 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 but she was like your fairy godmother. Yeah, she definitely changed my like trajectory world. Your world. So we moved. We moved after I you had that her. experience. You. Yeah, you, you moved after that. Mm -hmm. But you really. And I actually, I'm friends with her on Facebook, so I'm sure she's seen that. She knows. She pushed me a little bit. She knows. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's we need to do that for each other more as women. Yeah, because we. Instead of helping each other, instead of identifying something and helping, we sometimes talk about someone instead. Yes. Right? Yes. Or if we're feeling down if we're in a balanced place, we might sort of feel happy that someone else is maybe worse off than us. I'm just saying this is the bad this is the bad side of womanhood. But it makes you feel a ton better to take those crummy feelings and help somebody. See? get into a higher place. See? This is what we need to do instead. Yeah. We need to no, be like, what was her name? Uh, Beth. We Carol. need to be like Beth. And just be like, listen, I see that you're struggling. Here's whatever. Here's my yarn or here's my food or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I love this story. Beth! Okay. Okay, next. So that was the beginning of knitting. Yeah. <laughs> get me back on track. A few years later, I had some kids 
and um, went through divorce. And since I was a stay-at-home mom, I had no income. Yeah. So to keep myself sane, I was knitting a lot, and then the yarn started to dwindle. I didn't have money to buy more yarn. Yeah. <laughs> so you know about yarn. Um, my birthday was approaching, and I asked my mom and dad to buy me a package of blank yarn <laughs> so that I could... Because at that point, I was starting to like have okay, some you know you online follow yeah <laughs> <laughs> I started to have some online followers that showed interest in the colorways that I picked for my knitting yes so in my like okay what am I gonna do to get more yarn to knit with to keep myself <laughs> sane process <laughs> <laughs> I thought okay well people like the colors I'm choosing for my knits so why don't I get this yarn from my parents for my birthday, put colors together, yeah. and then everybody else can have cool colors to knit with yeah. without the thinking. Yeah, because sometimes people just want that. Yeah, yeah, and color doesn't come naturally for some people. So yeah. Um, so that was the beginning of the end. The beginning. So, yeah. so you just started dyeing, and were you selling it? I got 10 skeins to start with. Wow. And um, I thought that was like, Big business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got ten skeins. Yeah. So I dyed those, and I, I mean, don't how think many? They, were all, they weren't beautiful. I was gonna say, how many have you dyed now? Like, do you even know how many you've dyed now? No, no. A bajillion. A lot. A lot. Okay, so you thought ten. I mean, so I had the ten, and then from that, I think I just sold them to like random people on Instagram, maybe in Etsy. Yeah. And then my thought was, okay, if I double that 10 from selling these 10, I'll have 20 skeins to sell <laughs> next week. <laughs> so, it's really good math. The process started <laughs> and eventually I had an update's worth of yarn. Yeah. And um, I was pretty amazed and overwhelmed at how quickly it took off and how overwhelming the response was because in my head, I was like, I'm going to do this to allow myself to have yarn to knit with. And now it's your business. And now it's like my whole world. <laughs> so. Now, are you a one-woman show? Yes. I actually just hired a really good friend of my husband's to do shipping, and he labels the yarns. Nice. And has he made any mistakes yet? <laughs> he hasn't. Every time he comes over, he's very like paranoid that he's gonna make a mistake. <laughs> so every time he comes over, he's like, "Did you get any emails?" Like, no, we're all good. This time. <laughs> but knitters so. are the most generous people. But we also want what we want. Yes. And so yes. if we get sent the wrong Republic of Wool, we're gonna be like, "Dude, mm -hmm. where's my Republic of Wool?" No. And now I can just blame it on him. So <laughs> let's talk about your yarn. Um. So, this What's is... This one? I have to put it in front of your face because you're dancing. focused. Wait, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, that is a solo. It's a single ply. Okay, so these which are Which like I just recently started working with. I'm more of a plied yarn girl. Okay, but, why? Talk about the difference. Because uh, this is plied. I think it's all opinion. This is plied. This is a four ply. Well, I'm asking because I tend to gravitate towards this, but I don't know why, and I don't know See, what will make I my knitting better. Me. I think this it. is more drapey, yes. and I feel like it doesn't hold structure quite as well. You're right. Um, and some people really like the fuzzy glow of it. Okay. Um, I like really structured, like. So you like a full stitches. So. So sock yarn you like for a sweater. I don't like knitting, fingering my sweaters. Okay. Good <laughs> to know. I do it. But they're hard to finish for me. Okay, this is the same. Um, but this yes, is a those, are both, those are flossy fingering. They're a four ply blend. Um, How did you get the name of Republic of Wool? This is also flossy fingering, by the way. That this was, is Grand Scheme. Oh, I, people are going to want to know. Oh, shoot. This is brand new. Grand Scheme. This is and brand new. I'm super excited about this colorway. Tell me why. Um, I don't know. There's just lots of pretty colors in the transition, and I love like neon -y, pink yellow yeah that little surprise it's in there 
You gotta move the label when you're checking out your Republic of Bowl. Yeah, yeah. make sure you see always, it all. Always float your labels around so you can see all the goodies. Ooh, and that's a good tip. Dig in there. Like, dig in like, there. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. that. I didn't even know that was there. Uh, so how did you get the name Republic of Wool? I wanted something that was like inclusive, like yeah, the movement. Yes. And I I'm really bad with naming things. Like colorways, it's stressful for me. But I remember staying up at night like running things in my head, like what do I want? And like that, brainstorming. Yeah, that just came just to me stuck. and and but this is El Scorcho. I mean, who who named that? El Scorcho. That's, that's brand new. And that. Did you name it? I did. I named it today. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah. But that's um, I don't know if you know Weezer, but it's like a really old Weezer song. song. And I remember and Weezer. Yeah. I w I don't think I listened to a lot of Weezer, but I definitely remember it. So that just shows that I was a nineties yeah, girl. Yeah. I, I feel like a lot of my yarn names either come from movies or music or yeah. Taking I myself too seriously. I think yeah. it's fun to have a fun name. Sometimes I'll, I will buy yarn because the name's clever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm strategy. still, like, there's some, like, rather risque names of yarn out there, and I'm still scared to do that, okay. but they pop in there. I'm just like, <laughs> I don't want to scare people off. <laughs> I don't think that's possible. I think you have a really loyal following. Yeah. So your days are, like, dying all day. What are your day? What's your week like? <sighs> It was like shipping all day one day and then dying, but I hired on my friend to take care of shipping so that I could spend time just dying. And my youngest child just started kindergarten this year. Best day so ever. I was super excited because I could die all day. Yeah. And then I got a little surprise. And <laughs> so now my whole world is like, what am I going to do? Because I haven't done this with a little tiny attached mm -hmm. being yeah so um yeah right now my days are just to get the kids to school come home drink more coffee than I should <laughs> and turn on some music just get down get to work you're gonna be fine with that baby yeah I think so you know they're just they don't move that much Even for a while my my <laughs> other kids are older now too. They're self-sufficient. They're raised. So I could always, They're basically raised. you know, like hold the baby while I dug yeah. a batch of yarn yeah. for everybody. Totally. Yeah. And you know, like those carriers they have now, which I didn't have with my oh, first yeah. two, they can nurse. Mm -hmm. Just, they're just in yeah. there, just whip it out. You don't even have to like do anything. Just baby, like you're hungry, just here. Leave me alone. You just die. Yeah. That's my only it's amazing. In my head, I'm like, I could totally die with the baby on front of totally. or on the front of me. Totally. But well, baby gas mask yeah. can be fine. Yeah. That's my thing. Is that like, <laughs> wait, the baby's gonna breathe in all that pigment. That's probably not good. So I've gotta figure that we'll out. We'll figure it out. It's gonna be great. Like a little eventually. Someone comment bubble. below. How can we like yeah, <laughs> like a little helmet? And like yeah. a bubble. It's like the bubble baby. We need the yarn. You have to make it happen. <laughs> this, is, this is what I'm afraid of. So, last question. Um, why? Why are you doing all this? So, why? Why? Why do you knit? Why do you dye? What is? What's um, in that for you? I knit because I honestly don't remember what I did before I was a knitter. Nice. Um, okay. I can't go anywhere without knitting, mm -hmm. especially like social, like. A doctor's office where there's just people sitting. Murder. I like suicidal. Knitting. Yeah. Just bring the needle. Or sitting on a bus, which I don't really ride that often. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's have like, have it. it's what I have found is people either will completely ignore you or the really interesting people will talk to you. Yes. So it's kind of a like, it's, it's either a magnet. conversation starter for interesting people yes. who <laughs> you care to talk to, or oh it's a headphone like a situation. Yes. Oh so, so there's um, people. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Um, and then dying. Yeah. Uh, it's a different level that I don't understand yet. It's. It was really fun at first. It's still really fun, but it's a lot of work now just yeah. to keep up with the demand. And I don't even keep up with the demand at this point. Because you do updates and then it sells out like that. Yeah. Like so 
it's and just kind of like keeping up with what's comfortable for me and my situation. Um, so, so lay off <laughs> with the negative email. She's having a surprise I've actually, baby. I've actually been really lucky and I haven't gotten too many like disappointed That's emails good. That's good. and hate mail. So people or, who really want your yarn, they know, they, they get the newsletter, they get the Instagram or whatever you send out. Yeah. Well, you know, they get the notification somehow that you're going to have an update or they know when it's coming. Yes. And Most then they can get know. their yarn. Yeah. And they're in local yarn shops. Not really. Not this one? Not, not Starlight? Anymore. They're not in any <laughs> local yarn shop. So. I am having a trunk show at Starlight. See? On the 19th? Oh. May 19th? May 19th. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you can see it and you can move the label around. Yeah. I, I mean, I try to make it accessible every once in a while. It's just so much work to keep up. <gasps> That's our timer. <laughs> it's a lot Finish of work your sentence. Up with. Finish your sentence. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. But you're doing it. And, and we're glad you're doing it. On. Thanks for being on Christy Thank you. Bye. Bye. I had such a wonderful time meeting Michelle of Republic of Wool, and she gifted me a few skeins to take home. So I wanted to show you what she gave me. This is the Grand Budapest Redux. Now, I believe this is the same color that Caitlin Hunter used in her original Zweig. Zweig. And I don't know if it has changed or not, but uh, this I believe this is the same color. At least that's what it was called. So I have this flossy fingering. Uh, they're all flossy fingering, actually. And then this is El Scorcho. That might have to, I don't know, I might have to keep this one myself. We'll see. And then Grand Scheme, and she was very excited about this one, in particular the pop of pink and coral in there right here. She was showing that to me. She's really excited about that. So I'm going to put these in my giveaway pile, and just a special reminder, the giveaways are um, going to be for my patrons. So thank you so much for those of you who support my channel and you can head on over to Patreon and you can become a patron yourself so that you can be eligible for all of these amazing giveaways like Republic of Wool. Thanks so much for checking into Christy Glassnitz. I hope you enjoyed getting to know her for those little 15 minutes. She was very inspiring. I just love women who uh, handle motherhood and work life and all the things with such grace and beauty. And I will see you next time on Christy Glassnitz. Bye! Thank you.